All right, all right, Shalom, Shalom. So uh, this video is uh, the execution of Sonia Macy. What does God want us to do with the people? To avoid police, right? To avoid having to, to need these police uh, as much as we utilize them. I know a lot of people say local police, but police is still be, uh, you know, everybody can be persuaded by corruption. So what could we do as a people? Trying to be a righteous people. What does the Bible say we should do? And that's what this video is about. <laughs> so without further ado, we're going to get into it. Uh, if you don't know, I made a video about Sonia uh, Macy and about what happened to her and how uh, the deputy officer unalived her. Uh, it's an hour long video. I'm, I'm gonna probably come back onto this computer and edit it and make the part where I'm just showing the video of what happened to her separate from the lesson plan and drop that separately. But uh, if if uh, you don't mind, it's an hour long. And if not, you could just watch that video and that way you'll know what we're talking about. You can always go back and watch it for the lesson plan later. That doubles my views up anyway. So. Much appreciated. On that note, what can we do as a people? What does God want us to do as a people? Knowing we live in this time uh, where the world, the judgment of the world is about to come on them for what they've done to us, right? What can we do to be protected against the judgment of the world and the judgment of these people? Because as God is judging them, they're going to want to destroy us. Matter of fact, the Bible says that God will start at his temple, at his people. So that starts with us. So what could we do in this time? Uh, right? So we're going to go to uh, Zephaniah, right? And we're going to start it too. <clears throat> Zephaniah 2, uh, uh, we're gonna, it's chapter 2, verse 1. We're going to start at verse 1, right? It says, Gather yourselves together, right? Ye, it says, yea, gather together, O nation not desired, right? So us, our people, the ones who are hated by all the other people, we need to start coming together. That's what he's telling us. Gather yourselves together, yea, gather together, O nation not desired. Before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as a chaff, before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you, before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you, right? So before this full destruction comes upon us, we need to gather together because us being separate is leading us to be destroyed in part, right? It says, seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought with his judgment. Seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger, right? So seek to be meek and seek righteousness. What is righteous? Righteous or justice, right or just, right? Be Try to be right on God's side or just, right? In all meekness, which is humility, right? Being humble about it, knowing that it's not just of you, but it's coming from the most high, right? People don't have to believe it because this is the truth. When you believe, when you give all the credit to God for giving you information, or not all the credit, because you got to respect your elders and your brothers and the people who God sent to give you the information. So it's not that you didn't learn it from God, but God sent this brother or, you know, this elder or somebody that, to help you with this information. So you got to give them credit first off, right? But when it's saying, like, seek meekness and humility, it's saying, like, no, because when you start telling people what uh, God is giving me this insight, then people who might think that something you said an opinion of yours is wrong or is against God, and you telling them God is giving you this insight, a person might think that you're you're cocky or arrogant because of your confidence or your faith in what God has shown or been telling you, right? And, and it's weird because we live in the end times where God is telling people what's going to happen, how it's going to happen, and, and the schedule is lining up according to the Bible. So these are things that we're watching prophecies be fulfilled that some of God has had some of these people know these prophecies and even prophesy 
the prophecies before they're being fulfilled using the word of God, right? And people would look at that as you being confident or, or you know, in God. And, and they would think that you're not being humble because you're confident in the information that God has provided to you through your elders, through your brothers, through your system of order that God has set up, right? But it says, gather yourselves together, yea, gather yourselves together, O nation, not the choir, right? Seek ye the Lord, all the meek of the earth, which hath wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger, right? It says, for Gaza shall be forsaken. We see what's going on in, in Gaza, right? And Ascalon, a de desolation. And they shall drive out a shot at the noonday. And Ekron shall be rooted up. Woe unto the inhabitants of the seacoast, the nations of the Chetheries. The word of the Lord is against you. Right, and we know the word of the Lord or the speech of the Lord is Yeshua Wamasiach, right? Is against you. Oh, Canaan, the land of the Philistines, I will even destroy thee, that there shall be no inhabitant. In the sea coast shall be dwellings and cottages for shepherds and folds for flocks. In the coast shall be for a remnant of the house of Judah. And they shall feed thereupon in the house of Ashkelon. They shall lie down in the evening, for the Lord their God shall visit them in turning away their captivity. Right? So God is about to take this captivity off of us. But in order for us to be in a better situation, we must stop having these. We must join together and be stronger and be under order. Right? And I know it normally, it starts in the house, right? And then the order of the brothers and everything like that. But we got to establish some type of order, some brotherhood with the brothers. Even if it's smaller groups, then the smaller groups can link up in a bigger scheme. But I would, you know, of course I would love and be uh, exhilarated, <laughs> right? And uh, really happy about it if we could all do it. And I know that that seems to be impossible. But I won't stop having faith that at least a, mad, a big a chunk of us will be able to do it and come back together, right? Like he said at the very beginning, gather yourselves together. Yay, gather yourselves together, O nation not desire. Being that all these nations hate us and dislike us, then we've been suffering this hate, which led to us being offended, which led to us hating each other. The Bible gave a clear breakdown of how we got to this point of hate between each other, between brother versus brother. Like between us being of the same kind of people and hating each other, we, we it, there's a clear breakdown in the Bible, right? It says, I've heard the reproach of Moab and the revilings of the children of Ammon, whereby they have reproached my people and magnified themselves against their border. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, surely Moab, shall be as Sodom, and the children of Ammon as Gomorrah, even the breeding of Nettilis, in the salt pits, in the perpetual desolation. The residue of my people shall spoil them, and the remnant of my people shall possess them. Right? Speaking of, of Christ's kingdom, of uh, other nations being under the possession. Now notice, when we're talking about us possessing them, we have the laws of God. That's how... That's why it's important to know them 613 laws because it dictated how we were to treat a, a servant or a possession and how they were supposed to become like one of us, right? So thank God for the laws because otherwise it's these situations we wouldn't know how to deal with, you know? It says, this shall they have for their pride because they have reproached and magnified themselves against the people of the Lord of hosts. The Lord will be terrible unto them for he will famish all the gods of the earth so all these false gods all these false things that they made people think and believe through these religions and these religious institutions and and all of these bullcrap things where they got people fully out of order instead of being in order we got to throw that away to get back together because if we're under those things guess what god is going to famish all the gods of the earth right all the men shall worship him, every one from his place, even all the isles of the heathen. 
So everybody who make it through this time that's coming, this this time of judgment, everybody is going to have to worship the Most High God, right? And they're going to have to go under his order. So it's going to be 144,000 men, 12,000 of each tribe. There'll be men under them. And then there's going to be groups of men under them that's broke down over other men. And all of these men will be over their households, right? And all of their, you know, in so on so on the order right the order will be established again right ye ethiopians also ye shall be slain by my sword right so he picking up all the people who was coming against us throughout the years right and he will stretch out his hands against the north and destroy assyria and he will make neviath a, a nineveh a desolation and dry like the wilderness and flock shall lie down in the midst of her. All the beasts of the nations, both the, comorm the cormorant and the bitter, shall lodge in the upper lintels of it. Their voice shall sing in the widows. Desolation shall be in the thresholds, for he shall uncover the cedar work. This is the rejoicing city that dwelt carelessly, right? So it's going, all of these destructions lead to what city? The one we're present in, the daughter of Babylon, the great old U.S. of A., right? This is re is the rejoicing city that dwelt carelessly with all the things that's going on in the world. Our people getting murdered, the World War Three happening, millions of people getting unalived throughout the world, uh, all of the wickedness that's going on. This city is rejoicing, is the rejoicing city that dwelt carelessly. And said in her heart, I am, and there is none besides me. We the greatest country in the, on the planet. That, that's what this place is saying. How has she become a desolation? A place for beasts to lie down in, and everyone that passes her shall hiss and wag his hand. Right? Because the destruction and the smoke of her torment. So that's why I always say to pray for them people who are going through the torment, who are going through the things now, because that same thing will fall upon us right now this is what we're continuing remember the first point in that was talking about the destruction was the second point but the first point was how god was telling us to gather together as a people but how can we gather together we need that order and the order is the law but we're going to use new testament understandings to teach the order a little bit right so let's go into this right it says this is uh, Matthew 25, and we're going to start at 31. It says, When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all of the holy angels with him, then he shall sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. He shall set his sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto him on his right hand, Come, Ye blessed of my father, right? Notice it says, then shall the king say. So this is talking about the son of man, which is uh, Christ, Yeshua Wamasiach. And then notice it's saying the king, because there's still a lineage of, 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 of people, right? It says, then shall the king say to him on his right hand, come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundations of the world, right? So Because Christ is bringing the kingdom from the heavens. So he's saying, the King Christ, the Son of Man, the Christ, is saying, come inherit this kingdom, right? And why is he saying that? Because this is back to the purpose. I almost got lost for a moment. But this is back to the point of the lesson plan right here. <laughs> I almost got thrown off. So that's how Satan be working. But here we go. For I was hungered, right? So this, the lesson plan is what can we do, right, to prepare ourselves and to come together like that first scripture said, as a people under righteousness. In order to be prepared for the the, the the destruction and the things that are coming against us, right? Then shall the king say to them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, right? So this is what Christ is saying to his people. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked and ye clothed me. I was sick and ye visited me. Whew, 
Dang, that just hurt my back right there. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee in, in hunger, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? Or when saw we a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we the sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Right? So it's showing that there's going to be who was doing the most to look out for their brother, to care about their brothers, to do for their people. To even, even if the people didn't appreciate, it's not about what people appreciate. Look at Christ. Look at Yeshia. Right, what he was doing, a lot of the people at the time didn't appreciate, and he was doing the greatest miracles on the planet ever that was ever done on the planet. Him and some of his disciples, right? And they didn't believe them, they didn't appreciate them, right? <clears throat> then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye curse, into everlasting fire. Remember that everlasting place. That I said that that police officer was going to go to in that last video. This is what it's talking about. Prepared for the devil and his angels. For all of the angels that follow Satan. Satan himself and all of the people who follow Satan and listen to his voice to get them to think and do wickedly. Right? For I was in hunger and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty and ye gave me no drink. Why? Because the most likely they were like, listen, I'm hungry. I got to feed my own. I can't take care of you. I was thirsty. You gave me no drink. Well, I'm thirsty. I got to give myself something to drink. I can't make sure you're good. I was a stranger and you took me not in. Listen, I don't care what you go through. We all suffer stuff. Everybody's suffering. So it doesn't matter what in the other individuals are suffering. You see how Satan manipulates, you see how I'm using this scripture to show how Satan manipulates people to get them to do his bidding. And and this is and these people are going, going, going to go into everlasting fire. Then shall they also, it says, it says, naked and ye clothe me not. I, I don't have no clothes for myself. I can't give you from something I don't have. Sick and in prison and ye visited me not yeah i know you sick i know you in pain i know you going through whatever you're going through but man i'm busy i'm too busy to be dealing with this i can't waste my time on this my schedule is too precious then shall they also answer him saying lord when we saw thee it says saying lord when saw we thee in hunger or at thirst or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in person, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee. When did when did I ever see you in any of these situations, Lord? And I didn't reach out to try to help. When did that happen? Because we get so busy thinking about ourselves, sometimes we forget when we step on people and don't do the most that we're capable of for people. And that has to stop in order for us to gather together. Right, us undesired people, in order for us to gather together and make it into this part of the kingdom that Christ is providing for us, right? Because He says, Blessed are ye of my Father, and you can inherit the kingdom that is prepared for you from the foundations of the world. So, the, the new heaven and the new earth, the, the, the kingdom that was prepared, the, the uh, uh, new Jerusalem that was prepared from the beginning, from the foundations of the world, right? And these people are like, when did I not minister unto you? Then shall he answer them and saying, verily, verily, I say unto you, or verily, I say unto you, inasmuch as ye did it not to the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into everlasting life. So we have to be careful when we're dealing, because we got to understand that they hated God's people before, just like the, the, uh, the woman who just got, uh, you know, who just passed, Sonia uh, Macy, right? They hated us before her, right? They hated us. They've been hating us for a long time. We've been under persecution. So if this is for Gentiles and any other people, right, that might be mixed with Gentile or even if you are full 
a brew, a full brew on both sides of your parents, whatever the case is. This is something to take to heart, right? Know that when we go against our own people, when we go against each other, when we doubt each other, when we don't put things in order, when man don't deal with man as all of them being men of understanding and respecting their elders within that, because Christ wasn't the elder of the disciples who followed him. Most of, a lot of some of them disciples were older than him and some of the apostles were younger than him, right? Like Steph and Stephen, right? But some of the disciples were older than him. So Christ had these apostles and these disciples who started following him through periods. The disciples followed him from the beginning. The apostles followed him from then, but Christ was still hated. He was still going against. People still, they believed that what they thought was the truth in God and that everybody had an individual relationship, uh, which everybody does, but they had their own private interpretations, which the Bible says there is no, no, there is no private interpretation of the Bible. Matter of fact, I'm going to bring that up as the last scripture because I'm going to try to get through these, right? It says, this is a uh, John four, right? Beloved, let us love one another. Cause this is going to be what we use to come together. And I know for the deep lawful brews, y'all saying we need to uh, learn the law. That is for sure. I'm a hundred in agreement. We need to love the law, right? But some of the times, the first thing we need to understand is when we go into the law, we don't use the law to persecute but to uplift and to correct order, right? But we don't use the law to down one another or destroy one another because it, like when, when Christ says, if you stop one of these little ones from entering into the kingdom, that little one is not defining children. It's defining uh, uh, lesser people. Rather, it's uh, childhood, like smaller people because they're in childhood or people who are lesser experienced in the word, beginners into the truth, right? saying don't do anything to push these people off because the people who really believe they're going to take every word you say and they're going to go with it and they're going to study behind it and they're going to put it in and they're going to use it to prove they're going to go through it to prove that it's right and confirm that it's right with the scripture they're not going to be going back and forth with you so if if you got the the like the bible says don't be going back and forth like don't don't uh, have a foolish uh, bitterings, right? Don't 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 have foolish discussions that don't benefit anybody. But for the ones that's gonna listen and humble themselves and do what's necessary and hear as the Bible is saying, you you gotta have that love towards them, man. You know what I'm saying? You gotta have that love. And once you understand the love part, now you can add the law to the love and you can understand how to use the law properly to love a person, to not offend a person, to be righteous to your fellow brothers and sisters, right? He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this man was manifested the love of God towards us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him, right? Hearing is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us. And he sent his son to be a perpetuation for our sins, right? For our sins. Be loved. So a, 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 a proposition. Oh, man, I can't believe I said propitiation. Which I guess, if I'm just rereading it, I guess it could be spelled that way. But uh, proposition, right? That's the proper way to uh, uh, to say it, right? The proposition for our sins. So he was a proposition for us. Meaning like if they put me out there, coach, if they do the guidelines that they follow the law under the guidelines that I'm trying to explain to them how to follow the law with the love they need to have, right? If they follow all them 16, 613 commandments, which I gave them in, with Moses, if they can learn how to follow that with love, forgive them father you know <laughs> you know it says be loved if god so loved us we ought to also love one another you see that's what it's going to take for us to come together no man ha no man have seen god at any time right so there's a lot of it's easy for people to say i love god i love christ but then they treat they met a, a fellow man a certain way and have don't have respect for their fellow man uh, especially the righteous like it's so crazy how the righteous 
are most of the time disrespected. They're looked at as weak and all these other things <laughs> because they're trying to be righteous. But it says no man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us. Right? If we love one another, God dwelleth in us. And his love is perfected in us to bring an end to complete. Meaning that, that with that love, like I was just expressing, now we could go through the law and perfect his law like he was saying. But it starts with us having the love and care for each other, right, that we need is perfected in us. Hereby uh, know we that dwell in him, in he in us, because he has given us his spirit, right? And that's talking about the Holy Spirit. That's why it, Yeshua said that he had to leave. He must leave so that the Holy Spirit could come. He left that Holy Spirit. That's part of the three, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are all under the order of God and all do nothing of their own, but the will of their of God, which the Holy Spirit, which is the, the mother figure, right? The, uh, the one that was put out, uh, uh, the one that was put out of God, right? From the, at the beginning, the one that was yanked out of God in the feminine, right? The Rawak, the Holy Spirit, right? And then you got Yeshia, which is the Son of God, which is how the house should be, right? The the Father, the Son, and then, you know, all order, all both of them are ordered under the, the Father, which is God, right? The same way our household should be, that's the order that God has established with the Holy Spirit and with Christ. Right, so it's hard to like it's saying to say that we love Christ, who we have not seen, or love God, which we have not seen, but we don't know how to love each other in the order that Christ and God left, and we're gonna need that order in order for us to come together, O desire one, gather together, O desire one of Israel. Right? It says, and we have known and believed the love of God have to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. It's because of that love. It's because we loved so much that once we went into the law, because people got to understand that when it's written to these people, these people grew up under the law. It's for our people to come back to the law with this love. They needed the love in the law that they had already learned. We now have the love, and a lot of our people need to understand the law in the order, right? Because as he is, so are we in the world. And there is no fear in love. But perfect love caught, casteth out fear. Right? Panic, flight, fear, the cause of fear, terror. Because fear hath torment. Right? Or correction. Fear cometh when fear happens to correct the action. Right? He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he loved us first. Is if any man say I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God who he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God love his brother also. Which the law teaches us how to love each other, teaches us how to be in order with each other, but it also teaches us uh, now we had crisis message, which teaches us how to use that law in love, right? <clears throat> Here go another one. It says, uh, Enter ye in at the straight gate. For why? This is Matthew 7 and 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is its way that leadeth to destruction. So most of this world is creating avenues. Satan is manipulating people to, to go down the direction of destruction. And many there will be which go in, in their act, right? So many people are going to go there, like on the account of how they live. But straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. Why? Because it's a lot harder to be under God's law and God's order. Because Satan is against God's law and God's order. Because Satan wants us to be against each other. That's how, that's how he works, right? 
It says, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits, right? By what they do, by how they speak, by the things that they say. When people are quick to curse you and put you down and say bad things and say evil things and quick to think evil of other people, that is their fruit. That's the fruit of that of their mind. That's what their that's what's coming forth is their mind. And when you think evil things about people, it leads to the same thing that happened with Sonia Macy. That officer was thinking easy evil of her from the beginning and it led to death. Death, destruction, and separation. Because the Bible says that the, these demons only want to do what? Kill, steal, and destroy, right? Even so, it says, do man gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? So it's saying you can't have the good in the bad. Meaning you can't say, we can't say we're good if we're always thinking and believing evil of everything else. Because that is a sign of our fruit. That's what's from in us. As, so as we believe, we think it. It is, a, I believe, a, 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 a something written from, um, not from theology, but I believe that's something written from one of these uh, white people. I believe it's white. It could be wrong. But it's also uh, one's perception is one's reality, right? So, like, how you perceive yourself to be is what you are to yourself. But what you do and how we act and interact with people and how we think about all these other people, Right? Is, is our real internalness, right? Satan can always mask ourselves to ourselves. So one can think one thing and perceive them be one way and, and in reality they're not. But these things, you can't fake that. If you think negative of people or speak down on people or have a negative outlook on, 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 on things or say things that could be detrimental to people or hurtful or harmful or evil that you wouldn't want said to you or about you, without facts or evidence that you partook in it, right? That's part of your fruit. That comes from the inside of you. That's not ration because you don't need to ration an opinion. You don't need to ration a thought. It could just happen. Opinions, what do they say? Opinions are like buttholes. Everybody have them. You don't need to ration an opinion, right? It says a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, right? Even so, a good tree bringing forth good fruit, right? So that means that if your inside is good, then what you're going to say about people, what you're going to perceive about people, and what you're going to think about people are going to be good. They're not going to be bad. That's a sign of the fruit that's coming out of. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit, right? So if we're corrupt in the inside, if a tree has bad roots, then the fruit and everything that come out of it is going to be poisonous or bad or bitter, right? If the roots and everything inside of the tree is good, then the fruit that's going to come out, that everybody else gets a piece of the fruit. Think about how you would use a tree. Everybody goes and eats off of this fruit. Everybody's going to have good things to say about the fruit. Now, we know the Bible says if everybody got good things to say about you, that's a bad thing. But what I'm saying is your actions. It don't matter. People can think bad of you and speak bad of you it's how you reply to people is what you say we're always responsible for us so part of us coming together as a people and gathering ourselves together is us being accountable to not bring forth evil fruit to not do things that offend each other to try to be more in order be and to not all be negative towards each other try to be able to sit down and reason with one another to get it right it says neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit Every tree that bringeth forth good fruit is hewn down and cast. It says, every tree that bringeth forth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. That means that if what's coming out of us is negative and evil, and that is the manner of which normally keeps us isolated and segregated into small groups instead of being able to converse and be around a multitude of people, right it's typically that thing inside of us it's a personal thing it's a satan attacking us right and and that's typically because it's hard to be around people because people don't trust people and they're unwilling to trust people and to have that love and to bring forth them good fruits like the bible said 
right? It's easier to have those negative fruits than bad fruits where you're always throwing bad seed. This person against me, this person hate me, this person this, this person that, right? It's a lot harder to not judge the person and judge the thing that the person may be and getting attacked from and have that patient with them. But that's what we need to get if we are going to come together after the Sonia Massey thing, uh, 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 execution, right? If we're going to come together and make it work, right? It says, wherefore their fruits, it says, wherefore by their fruits, ye shall know them. So if a person is speak evil, if you got a friend that's evil towards a lot of people, or always thinking negative, that's the fruit in your friend. That's the fruit. That's what they're paving out. Because understand that if I sat on the phone with you all day and told you negative stuff about a person, that would create you to have a negative thought process about them. See, fruit is something that can be given and harvested, right? So you harvesting that negative energy and passing it on to other people. Same way if you have that uh, uh, reasoning energy, trying to figure out why things happen, trying to cover for people, knowing that they are in a battle with Satan themselves, and that's why they think and do that. Because everybody battles, and, and, and sometimes you lose. Sometimes you take an L. But it's about getting back up and working harder to perfect ourselves, right? It says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven, like I said, them 613 laws that we put love behind, that we use them in love, right? Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name have done many works, right? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity, right? So a lot of, I love hearing that people learn from the lesson plans and that the lesson plans were great, right? But anytime somebody try to give me the praises, if I'm righteous or I'm holy, I'm just going to shave that off to God, right? Because I'm striving to be holy, Right? A lot of people take what people say to boost them up and it makes them feel like, listen, everybody think I'm the person to go to for God. So like, I got to have this knowledge. I read the Bible all the time. I study the Bible, but it don't always be that Satan is tricky. That's why it says that you have to have, you have to prove all things, right? Everything that you, that one believes using the Bible must be proved. Right with facts, with understanding, it must be proved. You must prove all things, and this will help us in establishing getting together with each other as a people, as a community, as a group, as brothers, being able to communicate with each other and strab it and establish things through proof. Right, and then also not be offended when things aren't the way we think. But one thing we can't do, because it won't work in the kingdom, it won't work even trying to put us together. It will not work if, if I can just think something is right without me being able to prove it, without me using scriptures. Because sometimes people could prove one thing and another person could prove another. And it's not just opinion above the scripture, but it's context and everything else, history and everything else that you know. That nothing can be read out of context. That's why so many people have so many false doctrines to begin with. Satan infiltrated it, read things out of contracts, mo context. Most people don't even know the other books, right? So we have a lot of messed up context. Or people misusing things out of the context of it, and therefore you get other doctrines or other beliefs. But the Bible says there is no individual perception. Of, of this book, right? There is no individual way. It, it is what it is. There's only one way. It is what it is, right? <clears throat> it says, Have we not prophesied it in thy name? Have we not cast out devils in thy name and done many wonderful works? And then I will profess to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity, right? Lawlessness. Because you, you weren't... Uh, you didn't want to be lawful. You didn't want to be orderly. So you're like, listen, I don't even know you. I don't know what you, I don't know how you think you knew me if you weren't for me and my people in the order that I set forward for you to be in. I don't know 
how you think you knew me? That's how Christ is going to be to some people. And we got to work hard in correcting ourselves in order that we're not one of them people that's told that, right? It says, therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, right, about using the law and using love, right, and merging them, that's pretty much what Christ's doctrine was, is to take away the death from sin through persecuting each other using the law, and then therefore use the law to build up each other and love each other the way the law was invented to do, to make us righteous before God. Because first we have to love each other because we're here in front of each other and then we must fulfill that law in order to please the most high god right to be in his law and to be in his order right it says i will liken him into a wise man who built his house upon a rock and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon the house and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock and everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon his house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Right? And it came to pass, when Yeshia had ended these things, the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. And I notice that that frustrates people. When you teach as if because you know God has taught you this and, and through rather it been through elders or other brothers or however God has brought this understanding or enlightenment into you, you know God brought it to you. And then when you're trying to teach somebody, they think you're arrogant about it because you know you're not wrong about it, right? And that's the same way they just felt about Christ. So people got to beware about even feeling that. He's arrogant about this or he's wrong about this. You got to prove all things. If a person is wrong, it's best to have the actual doctrine to be able to show them, listen, this is wrong. The context of what you're saying, it don't make sense this way, right? If God gave us the spirit, God didn't give everybody the spirit to prophesy. He didn't give everybody the spirit to understand the Bible. He didn't give everybody that spirit. God gave some people the spirit to be good uh, health providers and some people the spirit to, to build things and some people the spirit to, he gave us all different spirits. We're all a body. We all have a job. Not everybody have to have the same job, right? And I think that's what's messed up in our culture is, is you know, uh, everybody wants that same job. Okay, so this is Isaiah. Let me see, where was I at with this? Okay, here we go. We're going to start at 21. <laughs> it says, how has the faithful city become a harlot? Right? That means like they, they were fornicating with other gods, with, with false beliefs that aren't of God, it, with a different order that isn't of God. It was full of judgment, righteousness lodged in it, but now murderers, right? Think about it, to murder, to slay. And we live in a bunch of brothers, men will kill each other left and right like it's no problem. And a woman won't think twice about aborting something. Neither will a man. Both in, our, in this time, everybody's become a bunch of murderers, right? Thy silver has become dross, thy wine mixed with water, right? So it's saying everything you got isn't even pure, right? The princes are rebellious and the companions of thieves. Everyone loveth gifts. Everybody loves to receive things and think that if they're not receiving something, something's wrong. If they're not getting things to work in the way that they want it to work, something's wrong, right? And followeth after rewards. They judge not the fatherless, right? <laughs> and notice judge to govern. It means to tell them what's right and what's wrong, right? To help them out with, with understanding in events. They judge not the fatherless. So the people who don't have a father, you try to tell them things that they need to know in life, right? This is how you help the fatherless in the widow, right? Neither doeth the cause of the widow come unto them, right? 
the cause, the strife or dispute, right? The cause of the widow, what they're going through, helping them with certain things because a widow couldn't help. Uh, I mean, she can j judge or govern a man, but it's a lot harder. So having a man around to help judge and govern her children or help keep the children in line or give them advice when they need it or tell them something that you learned through life is something that we must do as a community, as a people, rather it be, you know, now we live in a weird time because if you say something to a woman to or to her children that she feel uncomfortable about or she feel like it's rude or she don't want to hear, she'll make you the bad guy over her children. But this is just the law. This is just what God was telling us to do, right? It says, uh, uh, let me go over it again. It says, uh, It says they judge not the fatherless, so they won't they won't correct them, they won't govern them. That to judge means to govern, right? Or or correct, they won't correct them. And we live in a time that makes it hard to correct them because of the widows, because of the women who don't have the man around have become the man, so they don't want the man to be telling they they'll pick and choose which advice. But even if that happens, if they don't want to take everything you're saying, they're only going to pick and choose something, just keep saying it. Prophesy it to the wind. Say whatever you're going to say to help them in any way. And if that if that doesn't work, then pray, right? Prayer always works, right? Therefore saith the Lord, the Lord of hosts, the mighty one of Israel, Ah, I will ease me of mine adversaries and avenge me of mine enemies. I will turn my hand upon thee and purely purge away thy dross, and I will take away all thy ten, and I will restore thy judges, right? The people who are over you, the people who are to who are who were supposed to govern us, like the in like in the old testament, after we left out of Egypt, there was a certain system that was put up to govern and judge the people with the kinghood and uh in the priesthood, right? And I will restore thy judges as at the first. And thy counselors, right, the, to advise, to counsel, as at the beginning, meaning he will put us back into order. And we have to come together and we have to get into order, right? Afterward, thou shalt be called the city of righteousness and faithful city. So how do we gather together, O undesired people? We have to come back together first off, right? The rebellious and the other people are going to be purged away. Like he says, I will turn my hand upon thee and purge away thy dross and take away all thy tent. And I will restore thy judges at first and thy counselors as after the beginning. After thou shalt be called the city of righteousness in the faithful city. Zion shall be redeemed with judgment. And her converts, right, her converts, right, which are uh, uh, the people who come back to her, or the people who convert over, like the, the Gentiles, right, with righteousness. In the destruction of the transgressions, uh, excuse me, Salakia. In the destruction of the transgressors, and of the sinners shall be together, and they shall forsake the Lord. And, and they that forsake the Lord shall be consumed. For they shall be ashamed of the oaths which they have desired. Right, so the things that they thought and the things that they wanted to do, let's go through oaths, a ram, the things that they thought and the things that they wanted to do, the things that they perceived to be right, without having that brotherhood, without having that system of people that they could go to and iron sharpens iron to get wiser, if they if they they're gonna be ashamed because they desired to be right. They desired to be that this was the way it should be, right? In all of the evil desires as well. We're not leaving them out. And ye shall be confounded for the gardens that ye have chosen. You see, you'll be confounded, which means to be abashed or ashamed for the gardens, a garden. Which means where you pick your fruit. We just talked about that earlier. What what uh, fruit, like what tree, what uh, fruit does a tree bear? Rather it bears good fruit or bad fruit. They're going to be confounded in the gardens that they have chosen. For ye shall be as an oak whose leaf faded in the garden now that have no water because it's dried up because the belief wasn't real. That's why the order is going to come back. 
and the strong shall be as a toe, and the maker of it as a spark, and they shall both burn together, and none shall quench them, right? So all of the people who have the, the wrong way of thinking and the wrong way of behaving, they're going to get burned in the fire, as we previously talked about. But in order for us to come together, we must gather together and remember and once we do that, the purge is going to start on our people because there'll be people who don't want to be in order, right? Who don't want to sit as men and be able to take what another man says and understand that. Who don't want to be part of a, a family system, a wife, and be under their man or a child and be under their their, their mother and their father. It, the, people will be purged from not following the order. From not gaining, from not being righteous and loved in the order. And then after that, it says, And I would restore the judges as at first, and thy counselors as at the beginning. So after that, the, the, the bad ones will be purged. So the ones left, people will know what this is. These are the good counselors. It will be no more thinking that somebody who's doing the work of God and who's trying to be a right person or a righteous person or a just person to God is bad to another person. Or another person thinks that they're bad. No, they're going to know that these are the righteous judges and counselors of God, right? And then after that, the city becomes righteous in the faithful city, right? After that, it becomes the righteous in the faithful city. I just wanted to go into this to go into the order of the family. We had just talked about uh, the wife being under the husband and the children being under the wife in that order. And, and the husband, the men having to deal with each other because all the men are under Christ. But men happen to be wise enough to understand that one man might be more knowledgeable than another man so they have that respect for each other to hear each other out and, and you know, gain perspectives and understanding from each other. So this is talking about, this is First John 4, and this is talking about the woman with the water, right? This woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not. Neither come hither to draw. Yeshia said unto her, Go call thy husband and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. So she lied. First she was a liar. That This is like the beginning of independent women. Like back in this time, this was an anomaly. Nowadays, women have way more husbands than her and way more messed up things in life. And it, it's a lot harder for women to actually commit than it probably was for her who didn't want to commit, right? It says, The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Yeshia said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands. Notice he said, To have or hold. So you have had five husbands. And he whom thou hast now is not thy husband. So the man that's with you now, he's not one of them. Y'all haven't commemorated. Y'all haven't lied together. You lied with at least five men, right? In that said is thou truly. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. But remember what he said. He says, It says, The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Yeshia said unto her, Go call thy husband and come hither. Why would Yeshia tell her that? And then she lied after that, but why would our, our Lord and Savior tell him that? Because that was the order. The women had to be, uh, Peter was married, Peter had a wife, but you never saw Peter's wife around because whatever Peter was learning from the disciples and from Christ, that is what he took back to his wife. And his wife just believed in him the way the order was supposed to be. So that's one of the reasons I was saying that, right? <clears throat> because this is what he said to her. Go call thy husband. Why would he tell her to call thy husband if he's speaking directly to her? Why not? Why wouldn't Christ just tell her how to get that everlasting water, right? It says, it says, uh, Yeshia answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him, uh, in the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life, right? Eternal life, right? The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither, 
to draw. Yeshaya said unto her, Go call thy husband and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. So like I said, he told her to call her husband because he wanted her to be in order. Remember, she ended up left leaving and going to tell the whole city. But she didn't tell her husband. So that just shows how much against the order she was. She didn't want to go under the order to receive the message that Christ was going to give her through her husband for everlasting life. Think about that. Because this is what she said. She said, The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. So give me this everlasting water. How do I get it? And Yeshia said unto her, Go call thy husband and come hither. Because that's how she would would be to receive it was under her husband, right? And it says upon this, it says upon this, uh, his disciples came. This is the first John four and twenty seven, and marvelled that he talked with the woman. Yet no man said, "What seekest thou?" or "Why talkest thou to her?" Because there was an order that went on. Right. And just talking to her was normally out of the order. But in order to give her that everlasting truth, she needed to go get her husband, which was the order that the Bible was conscripted. Right. The woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and saith to the man. Come and see a man which told me all things that I ever did, that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? And they went out of the city and came into her, right? So it never mentions that she actually went to do what Christ said and go follow her, get her husband, right? <laughs> it didn't say that. It says that she went and told all the men in the city, or or not, not all the men, what did it say? The woman left her water pot and went her way into the city and saith to the man. So she just started telling men in the city. She just, that allowed her to have power. Like, I just met the Christ. Go see the Christ versus her going to her husband so she could actually receive the, the power that Christ was promising her at that will. So we got to be careful with that, and we're going to go into this scripture next because it's talking about order. And first we talked about the brotherhood and what it would take for us to come together as an undesired people and to be live righteously and honorably amongst each other without offense right and without being evil or, or or bad to each other right now we're talking about the order of the household right because once you get the man to group together uh, uh, the men have households they have wives under them children under them and there's a certain order to the household and this is linked right to that scripture where christ told her to go get his husband uh, her husband but why it says, be ye followers of me, even as I am followers of Christ, right? So why would Paul be saying this? It's because he was the head of these people, right? That proves that they needed a teacher. I'm going to do a whole lesson plan on that because uh, <laughs> we learn from people in which God gives the Holy Spirit, and, and, uh, give the spirit of understanding. And we're, we're going to go, we're going to go through that in a whole nother lesson plan. Probably two or three away, if God allows it, right? It says, Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things and keep the ordinances, right? The handing down and or over a tradition. The ordinances was the laws, the commandments, right? As I delivered them to you. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, right? So the head of us men, like we were describing, was Christ. That's why Christ told that woman to go get her husband so she could get receive this everlasting uh, water because it would come from him right but satan don't want that order to be functional he don't want us to come together as a people he want man and brother versus brother cousin versus cousin neighbor versus neighbor he want us to despise each other right like i said through much affliction right through many afflictions Hatred came to where we would hate one another now, right? The other nations hated us and afflicted us to the point that we would hate each other, right? But Christ wants us to be in order. He wants us to love each other, love our neighbors, work together as men to, to 
to bring forth the truth in the gospel, right? And to not go against each other and to not try to tear each other down, right? And he won't, because that's the man's position, but he wants the woman to be under the man the same way we should be towards each other under Christ, right? Let's go. Let's get it. It says, but I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God, right? So the head of the woman, like when Christ was saying, go get your husband, that information needed to be passed to her husband so that she could receive it. And, and because of her lack of wanting to care about her husband or what they had to say, she went and told every man in the city, and it says that they believed that he was the Christ or the Messiah for their own reasons. So we don't even know if them people went and expound that information to her. She might have just been lost out on the information for the everlasting water because she didn't follow the orders of the Most High God, right? And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God, right? So God is over Christ. Man is, is uh, under Christ. So God is over Christ, Christ is over man, man's over the wife, right? Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered, dishonoreth her head. For that is even all one as if she were shaven. For if a woman be not covered, let her also be shorn, right? To shear. But if she be, a, but if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image in the glory of God. But women are the glory of man. For the man is not, it says, for the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman. For the man, for this cause ought the women to have power on her head because of the angels, right? So you have to have it covered because you got the satanic angels and the righteous angels, right? Which are the things that get into us, that build these emotions, that start conflicts or help us get out of situations. It's saying that they are more tempted by these things. That's why it also says to treat the woman as the weaker vessel. They are more tempted of, uh, by these things. That's why they ought to have their head covered, right? It says, For the man is not the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither is the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man in the Lord. For as the woman is of the man, even so is the man also by the woman, right? Because it takes two in order to bring forth children. But all things of God, judging yourselves, it is commonly that a woman, it says, is it commonly that a woman pray unto God uncovered, right? Because it was just said that she must cover herself from for the angels, from the angels, right? Do not even the nature, do not even the nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame to him, right? And when we're talking about long, people have people would think I have long hair. We gonna go through what long hair? All long does is cover this part of my head. The woman is actually supposed to go down her body to cover her body, right? Let's get it. It says. Doeth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? But if a woman have long hair, it is glory to her. Why is it glory for a woman to have long hair? For her hair is given as a covering, right? So a woman's hair, you know, if it's long the way women's hair could be, it, you know, if everything was more natural and everything. But you find women like it from India and different places that do have that type of hair that go all the way down their body, that they can use it to cover they, 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 all of their private parts, their breasts, their, you know, all of their secret parts, they can use it to cover. Where a man, what hair wasn't supposed to be that long to cover anything. Like, so I do have long hair, but not long like a woman, where it's, it's covering, you know, like it's on my chest or 
down my back or anything like that. Now, there are certain exemptions of that, right? Because we had, uh, uh, Samson had long locks. We don't know how long. I don't remember if it was down, like, past his back like a woman's would have been. Uh, like, you know, past his butt or something like a woman's. But we know he had locks, right? It says... But if a woman have long hair, it is glory unto her, for her hair is given to her for a covering. But any man seem to be contentious, right? Find of strife, like of fighting, beefing with each other. We have no such customs, neither the churches of God, right? So that's why it was saying, that's what I was saying from the beginning, right? There's an order that men are under Christ, and women are under men, and that's the order to keep them from beefing. So the woman should be under her husband, the children should be under the parents, right? So that should keep all of them from from going back and forth with each other because there's an order. But then when it's man against man, it says, but if any man seem to be contentious, right? Find of strife. We have no such custom, neither the churches of God, because we were taught to prove all, all things. We shouldn't be going back and forth between men we won't be able to gather together like like it said in the first scripture we went to. Gather yourselves together, yea, gather yourselves together, O nation undesired, right? It's impossible to do that if we start bringing new traditions of how we be for go, go at each other or uh, have strife between each other, right? We're not supposed to have strife between each other. That's the order between the men is that we're supposed to reason with each other. Let us sit down in reason right that is the order with men is that we're supposed to be able to reason with each other is that what this is too let me see matter of fact let me before i get off of this i know i've been on this and my back is killing me i want to look i want to look this up and go to it okay yeah, this is it. I don't know how I skipped over that. But here we go. It says, <clears throat> Wash you, make you clean. So this is Isaiah 1 and 16. Wash you, make you clean, put away the evil of your doings before my eyes cease to do evil. Right? So this is what it's talking about. Us being evil to each other. Us thinking evil about each other. Us everything evil we got we have to stop being evil in order for us to come together like it was saying it says learn to do well right that means that you aren't we aren't born knowing what's good or evil and knowing what's right or wrong but we have to learn under people to do what's good to to learn to do well seek judgment right relieve the oppressed right judge the fatherless once again, we're getting into that. Judge the fatherless to govern the fatherless. Plead for the widow, right? To contend, right? To strive. To strive to contend. So plead for the widow. Do what you can to help them in whatever means you can help, right? Rather that's uh, governing the, the, uh, the children, the fatherless, or whatever you can do to help, do what you can do to help because we always don't have the same means to help. Somebody might not have the money to help, but they have knowledge and information that they can share with children and understanding that they can share. Somebody might not have the understanding, but they have tons of money that they can use to help the children. But use that to help the widows, to help the children, right? Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. You see, so us reasoning together, us coming together and gaining understanding with each other. Gather yourselves together, ye undesired, right? Us coming together and doing that helps us, us reasoning together, right? To decide a judge to prove, to prove all things like we were saying comes from the other scripture, saith the Lord, Though your skins be as scarlet, though our skins be super red, that's how we can make them white as snow. Though they be like red like crimson, they shall be as wool. That's how we make them white like wool. 
if ye be willing and obedient, right? That there go that obedient. And what is the definition of obedient to hear? See, it's that order that he won't. Ye shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword. From the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Right? So this is the end of this lesson plan. Dang, this was another long video. I hope y'all like this. Uh, I'm going to leave y'all with Kyle Out Higher by Shimmy Shire, Robert Watt Quadage. I did both of these in one day. I took super breaks in between them but let me tell you this was this was a tough one this video was really tough that first video i did that y'all probably watched earlier uh in the same day i'm gonna try to release them that one was a little bit smoother on my back this one is horrible so on that note i just want to say kawala haya bahashimya shaya wabra wak kwadaj if y'all didn't understand anything or want to know uh, a more in-depth understanding on anything i went over Drop something in the comments and I will get back to you in on that comment and we can discuss what uh what what we need to discuss. Either way, just drop a comment, say what's up. I love hearing from y'all. I know I don't always respond because sometimes I'll be going through it. Like I say, just sitting up trying to make this is really tough. So on that note, I just want to say the water, which means thank you, Kyle Ohio by Shimmy Shia, Barakatha. And peace out until the next time. Peace, y'all. Peace out.